Hey guys, this is Coach Carly, and you're watching Bull Time. We are back with an edition of Bull Time with Coach Carly, although uh, I've been caffeine-free for the last nine weeks, and uh, so I'm drinking a whole lot of Spindrift. So uh, I guess it's speaking classes with sp uh, Spindrift instead of Bull Time. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a while. I apologize for you guys. Uh, I've uh, It's just easier for me to bang out a couple months in a row uh, as opposed to uh, doing one each month, just the way that schedules work out with everyone and including mostly myself. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll go over October and then, uh, we'll hit November, uh, in a different video, but, um, yeah, it's been a wild couple of, uh, months. It's been really slow, uh, in the sense of like, I haven't had to travel. Uh, client load is, is good. Uh, we're doing really well as a team, uh, just, yeah, haven't had to travel a lot and haven't had a lot of meets, which is awesome. Uh, we looked at the pace that we were at for 2023 and 2022. So at the end of October of 2023, we we're at 131 athletes competing. At the end of October in uh, 2022, we were at 131. So we were literally at the exact same place uh, in both October of last year and this year, and I have done way less travel. So I appreciate a lot of our remote clients coming out. I'll talk about it more in our um, November video, but we have uh, a lot of things coming up with, with our 24 hour access. I'll get a little bit into details of how that's gonna work and what that uh, entails. So um, yeah, I'll get into it. Uh, first off, we had uh, one meet in October. Uh, we had just our stay in your lane meet. So I'll, also, I apologize. I don't have my laptop or iPad. So if I look down at my phone, I'm looking at all of our clients and a little bit of recap on everyone and how they did. So uh, my apology. But yeah, we had uh, roughly about 13 of our own peeps competing uh, this time around at our stay in our lane 2023. I believe this is the second year that we have run this meet. Uh, maybe third, but I believe it's the second year that we've run this meet because 2021 uh, or latter half of 2020 was when we ran our Utica meet and we decided we just absolutely don't want to travel to do meets. Uh, yeah, first up we had Ange Malhort uh, Malhortra, well, only person that day to go nine for nine. I uh, also saw a 17 and a half kilo total PR. A uh, really, you know, interesting uh, meet for Ange. And I say that because um, she's been trying to understand if, you know, this is something that she can still push and do. And it's hard, right? Because she's in, she's in med school. Um, she's doing a whole lot of work. She's trying her best to do this. You know, we've had multiple conversations of like, is this something I can still do? So on and so forth. And to come out and hit 17 and a half kilo total PR and going nine for nine, and, you know, we lost a little bit of steam because they increased the totals a lot, uh, unless you were associated with the school for collegiate Nats. And uh, I know that took a little bit out of her sales, knowing that going into it. But at the end of the day, we're still pushing, we're still grinding through as, as best as we can. So I give her a lot of credit uh, for being able to uh, deal through that. Next up, we had Dana Bloomfield. Uh, Dana went seven for nine in a five kilo total PR, but What's cool about this five kilo total PR is for Dana, uh, we cut down a weight class. I think we cut down a good six to seven kilos, maybe even more. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but quite a bit of weight uh, that we had to cut and absolutely crushed her meat. Um, you know, the only lifts that we missed were a second and third bench. And that's honestly like kind of crazy because bench I thought was going to be the most consistent of all of her lifts based on you know, what her job is and how her training went. Um, but to still walk out of there with a five kilo total PR after missing second and third bench, that's a great day. So uh, next up, we had the two Smith boys. We'll go over Kagan first. Uh, Kagan went eight for nine with a 30, 37 and a half kilo total PR. And again, like uh, the, the amount of work that the boys have done, especially 
uh, Kagan and, and staying true from where he was way back when and, and putting in the work and allowing himself to really just keep getting stronger and trusting the process, allowing to understand a little bit more about his technique. He has done an absolute phenomenal job and I couldn't be any more proud of him. Uh, and then next up for the Smith boys, we had Nolan. He went seven for nine with a 50 kilo total PR. Uh, Nolan has just absolutely come into his own since the last meet that he did. And that's a huge attestment to his own drive. You know, his own drive of wanting to get better, eating the right things, eating more food. And that's always been an issue for him. Um, but like he hit this little spurt of absolutely trying to crush things and he is taking over the world. So I'm super proud of him. Next up, we had Christina Alexander. Uh, this is Christina's first meet, first meet with me, first meet ever. She went eight for nine. Uh, really cool stuff. I remember her just stopping in and saying, I just want to power lift. And uh, that was a really cool, really cool thing to her for her to just like have this goal and finally accomplish her first goal. And I know that we're already set up to do the meet in uh, February, which is going to be absolutely dope. So uh, she had a great first experience, a uh, good handler from Jen. So really, really excellent job there. Uh, next up, we had Mr. Zach DeMott, uh, a resident lifter, but now a part of the team. Uh, Zach has always done a lot of our meets and always supported everything that we've done. And I appreciate that, especially as a remote athlete that lived mostly in Rochester. Uh, he went eight for nine, seven and a half kilo total PR. Um, again, like I told him going into this meet, I was like, bud, like we're already signed up for a lot of meets. Like you're already doing June all the way right into October. Uh, I told him I want to take some time off so that way we can actually get get a lot stronger like we've worked on a lot of technique things but now it's time to actually like work on getting stronger so we're holding off on a little bit more moving forward just because again like it's it's a lot on your body and i want to make sure that we're having good meets i want to make sure that we're you know consistently always pushing that envelope and we can't do that for always competing then we had mr john hughes resident spotter and loader for the mustache crew uh, went seven for nine and a 55 kilo total PR, a huge meet for him. Uh, been a while since he's competed, but I know we checked marked uh, a lot of boxes. I know that we were hoping for that f uh, 400 pound squat. Uh, unfortunately, fell a little short just due to some technical stuff. Um, and we missed a technical technicality on the bench, which caused us to take a little bit less. So could have been upwards of like 60, 65 kilo uh, PR total. But this was still a really good meet for him. Uh, hit a milestone, uh, 205 deadlift, which was absolutely smashed. Uh, just a really good job. I, 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 he keeps putting into work. We had, you know, he goes through these phases sometimes where he's cutting and not, and bulking, but we finally got him in a bulk, um, and he's got a lot stronger during that too. Uh, usually every cut that he does, we maintain a lot of his strength. And then uh, as he bulks up, he actually gets a lot stronger during that. So he does a really good job of uh, maintaining his diet in addition to allowing his body to uh, get stronger and get more muscle density. Next up, we had Mr. Mac. Uh, Mr. Mac Kansko, uh, five kilo total PR, eight for nine day. Uh, Mac is a very consistent lifter. Um, we had a little bit of a, a downslope in the in the bench, um, but uh, again, a lot of we changed some technique in the squat and changed some technique in the bench. So, like I, I we managed the best that we could that day, and it was a little bit less than he's done, but uh, saw a pretty hefty uh, squat PR, and that allowed us to increase that total PR. But really good day. He always puts in the work. He's always consistent with that, even with everything else going on outside of his life. So that's, that's a really cool thing. And then next up, we had Mr. Bryant Carlson first meet ever. We finally got him onto the platform. I know that was, uh, you know, Bryant's been with us, Jesus on and off, uh, not, a, not as an athlete necessarily for me, but a member of the gym since like 2016. So uh, he came back as an athlete about, I think like a 10 months ago, something like that. Um, we've been working together and his lifts have never gone better. Uh, the only thing he missed was his last deadlift, the race for him and Matt Coleman to get to 500 on the platform. Uh, we gave Brian a chance at 500 and just wasn't there. Uh, I think he realized how much gas uh, got taken out during one of these meets. So uh, he, he got to experience that a little bit, but he had a great day overall, really executed all of his lifts uh, and executed training really well as well. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Paul Toot. Uh, seven for nine day, uh, missed, I believe, uh, a bench and missed, uh, a squat. 
Uh, not necessarily bad stuff, but it was like mostly like depth uh, or command things on the squat, a little bit of strength on the bench, uh, but it's still a 32 and a half kilo total PR for him. So uh, a really, really big day uh, of him competing. So I'm super happy about um, the outcome there. We're inching closer and closer to him hitting a QT for Nats. I think next week and uh, next meet uh, we'll be in that class in the 90 class and actually hit uh, the M2 total uh, qualifying total. So that's huge for him, huge for us. I'm really proud of all the work that he's done. We did a much better job of tailoring things a little bit more towards him, uh, maybe keeping that intensity a little bit more ramped, uh, ramping as we got closer into the end of the block. So happy with the outcome for him. Uh, next up, we had Mr. Eric, Tattoo Beeflo Eric. Uh, we did seven for nine with a 27 and a half kilo total PR. Uh, we missed some, again, some technicalities and, and some lifts, not necessarily strength related, just some technicality things. Um, and that happens, right? Uh, you move a foot, uh, sometimes bar goes a little up and down, things happen. Um, but to still come out with 27 and a half kilos, he puts in all the work. I know we, you know, talked about this the last time he did a meet back for Mayhem back last year, or excuse me, earlier this year. He had a, uh, a really good training cycle from then until now. And I'm just super happy about what the outcome has brought us. So really excellent job for him to get in, putting in that work and allowing himself to get stronger during the transition of him changing some sports. Next up, we had Mr. Gage Fay. Gage Fay went eight for nine, 20 kilo total PR. And that's with missing his last squat that would have gave him the illustrious 600 pound squat that him and his wife are racing to for on the platform. Um, he did a great job. Uh, I know he took a new job and that's really been a lot more conducive to his lifestyle uh, for lifting. And I know that's a huge thing for him. He wasn't just getting the recovery that he needed with his other job. And that doesn't help at all um, with what he's trying to do. And, you know, with him, you know, losing as much weight as he did during that time and, and not really uh, being able to focus on on our you know on the training as much it, it's it, it was difficult but we came through he finally got another job that's been a lot more conducive to like what he's doing and that's been absolutely awesome so we're really proud of his 20 kilo total pr i know that ota is still in full effect for him so it'll happen at some point two more we uh next up we had mr blake bizovi uh went seven for nine did 12 and a half less than his best ever um, we had an interesting cycle, a lot of life things for Blake, uh, you know, some injuries popped up, but like a lot of life things and consistency. Um, I know post meet also, we got a little bit banged up at the meet, but, um, yeah, we gave it a shot to do some things. He still had a great day, walked away with a squat PR. So I'm really, really, really happy about, uh, how well he did. It's hard to see the kind of results that you want if you're not extremely consistent with like what you're doing. And that sometimes uh, comes through and like to still be right around your best ever. I'm super, super, super happy uh, about that. Last up, we had Mr. Joey Strange. Uh, Joey went eight for nine, 15 kilos less than his best ever. Uh, mostly that was just missed on his last deadlift. You know, he missed his last deadlift and uh, that you know, put him behind the eight ball. You know, he had a very interesting prep. You know, we started training and he like didn't tell me he was losing weight. I was wondering why weights were like super fucking heavy and draining. And then uh, he kept telling me like, you know, I don't know why I feel so heavy. And then he told me he lost 25 fucking pounds. And yeah, newsflash, that's like gonna make a huge difference in how heavy that moves or excuse me, how heavy it feels and how slow that it moves. So yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> Uh, not what we expected to see as uh, things were going on, but we slowly started to gain a little bit more weight back. And we were able to salvage a pretty good day, uh, matching, I think, his best both in bench and in <clears throat> squat. And we were going to hit a little PR on his deadlift, but uh, ended up missing. So that concludes our October recap. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed what we had going on. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to give you November. See ya.